Hi, welcome to Mr. B's Brain Dump. Today we're going to repair the sump drain plug thread uh, on the sump of a Hayabusa 1999K1 which you should be able to use for many other uh, Suzuki engines. Okay, uh, let's start off with what you'll need. Um, uh, a helicoil uh, repair kit um, and this repairs an M14 thread with a 1.25 pitch which will be what most um, Suzuki engines will have at the bottom always check on the Hayabusa it's a M14 1.25 pitch thread repair kit is what you need okay the next thing is make sure you get a, a, a kit <laughs> get in close get a kit um, which has your M your cutter but it has an M14 pilot thread alright now the reason for that is it means that you don't have to drill your sump you don't want to do that and that's why I'm going to do this with the sump on the bike okay just on paddock stands I'm not taking the engine out I'm not taking it up turning it upside down and taking off forget all that alright if you use this you'll be fine and you follow what I do um, now the whole point of the pilot thread is it latches onto the original thread that's good isn't it because that means that when you wind it in okay it will be in exactly the right place and cut in the right place and you'll end up um, with a stronger uh, sump thread than the original aluminium one because we'll put a steel insert in called helicoil we'll get to that when we get to it but anyway get one with a pilot end all right if you don't get one with a pilot end or you can't get hold of one then you, i wouldn't recommend trying to do this whilst the engine is in the bike okay because you're gonna have to start drilling it gets messy get one with a pilot on it now let me just tell you the, the kit number for the one i'm using and that might help you guys uh, locate uh, the kit Okay, so the kit I'm using, uh, again I'm not advertising, it's just to help you guys, um, there we go, there, I'll just get that up in there, I can't read it now because I'm pointing out on the camera, but it's uh, part number 38140, okay, if you get that kit, you'll have the same kit as this, alright, and this will repair any uh, M14 1.25 pitch thread. Now, when you get your kit, you'll get these little babies. They're called helicoils, okay? Uh, my kit, the one that I've just mentioned, comes with two sizes. Now, uh, again, we'll get to this bit later, but one size is too small and one size is too big for the Suzuki Hayabusa sump. So I'm going to cut probably about three threads. I'll work it out later. But I'll probably cut three threads off the bottom, not the top where the tang is. That's the tang, that little tab there. Right, that's what I used to wind it in with. If I cut three threads off the bottom, it means I'm not going to have anything sticking out inside me, uh, inside the bottom of me. Uh, some, okay, you don't want that. You want it nice, nice and flush. So when you drain it, everything drains out. A helicoil kit. Right, the rest of the stuff, basic stuff you'll have in your tool kit. Um, 17 mil socket for getting the sump that off. If it's a knackered sump thread, then you're probably better off just investing in a small, no more than ten dollars, um, six pounds, UK pounds, uh, for a new sump plug. Okay, make sure it's got the magnetic bit in the middle for looking at telltale signs of engine issues. And anyway, get one of those. It's like I say, no more than ten dollars, well worth it. And it means that you'll have a fresh, a fresh wash washer, whatever you want to call it, you know, gasket washer. Um, which will squash down nicely, not too much of course when you do a backup. I'm guessing the one that you've got on yours right now is a bit flat, therefore get a new one. Okay, you'll need a ratchet, okay, make sure you use with your 17 mil. Okay. Here, a little shit bag. You've come out to destroy rather than help. Yes. Brilliant. Indeed. Um, you'll need something to um, connect to the bottom of your. Um, tap yeah the, the thread cutter uh, I'm improvising you're better off with a t-bar if you've got one I haven't so I'm using a 12 mil socket which um, locates to the bottom of the tap 
OK, and then a ratchet. And that's done using a small, sorry, medium sized ratchet, small extension. Again, you'll see how that one comes to it. Uh, you'll need a size 4 Allen key. If you look at my fairing removal video, uh, you can use, for most of your um, fairing bolts, um, a drill. Just, you'll see why. Watch the, um, watch the video. I'm not going to show you how to remove the fairing on this video, okay? Look at my fairing video. Okay. Something else you'll need is a pair of gloves because we're going to run the engine till it's hot before we drain it. Uh, and therefore you don't want hot oil on your hands, so get a pair of decent um, protective gloves. Obviously plastic gloves, whatever material they're made of. Um, oh. And a, a bowl, tray, whatever to uh, put your oil in. Now, because I'm doing a repair here, um, just point out something important. I'll give this a thorough clean inside from the last oil change. Reason being is I'm going to reclaim the oil that comes out because it's fairly new oil. Um, and I'm going to use that to flush the system through once I've um, cut the thread. Okay, so uh, if you're going to do that part of this, then make sure your tray's nice and clean, and then we'll filter out the oil that comes out. We'll show that as well, uh, and then you're good to go. Now, if you are going to filter the oil, then get some of this like Hessian cleaning rag stuff. All right, it makes a great filter. Okay, and we'll put that in a calendar, colander, whatever you call it. Uh, stuff you use to strain your veg with, alright? Don't tell the missus. <laughs> right, that's the stuff you need. See you in a bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the bike warm, alright? Now, that was it for you. Whilst you're warming the bike up to normal temperature, what you want to do is start doing the stuff that you could do whilst it's warming up, such as cleaning the oil pan, um, taking the uh, one side of your fairing off. Do all that, and then everything will take less time. Hi, welcome back. The bike's been running, uh, it's nice and warm now, and um, it's time to take the sun plug off. I've got the bowl in place, uh, and I've, I've put a little action camera on the floor, so hopefully you'll be able to see another shot as well, because it's a bit hard to show you this when it's underneath the bike. Uh, glove on, okay. Undo it, uh, so it's loose, and then take the wrist out with the glove. That's why you wear gloves, so you don't burn your hands on the hot oil. Lovely. my hands. It doesn't splash on the camera. You can probably see just how bad this thread is on this something. It doesn't look taking this off of my fingers. I'm not worried if the plug drops into the bowl. I'm not using it again. I will try and keep hold of it there so I can see the state of the oil on the engine on the magnet. Keep hold of the plug. Very clean. Oh, it's draining. Give me a close up if I can. It's hard to see. Again, it's sunny. But the top of that plug, I'm quite impressed, is uh, very clean on the magnet there. There's nothing there. So that means that my baby is nice and healthy inside. Just need to fix the sun thread. Bonus item, when you take off your oil filter, you probably find that you normally get oil all over your exhaust, and then how much you wipe off, um, it still ends up smoking and you don't want oil on your pipes and stuff. Well, there's something that I do to try and avoid that. And all you need is a pint size um, beer can, or any can really, aluminium or aluminum, whatever it is, um, people call it in other places. Uh, but anyway, um, all you need is one of these, because they're quite thin, um, and a pair of scissors. And you basically 
Here's the can. Getting that out to help, right? If you're a bit unsure with scissors. And then cut the top off. Top cut off. Alright, now there's gonna be sharp edges, so be careful. Let's trim that bit off there. Alright, then the same with the bottom end. Yeah, right, so I've pierced the hole. You see that there? Scissors in, cut the bottom off. the sharp edges. Okay. Hello. Right, now you've done that, cut it down the middle. A la, like this. Voila. Wrap that around your exhausts. Alright. Use as many as you want. If you've got um, fat pipes or you've got two pipes close together, then put one underneath first and just loosely wrap it round and then in true style here's one I made earlier um, so you have one on top underneath like that okay and you do it underneath first for a reason and then the other one wrap it over the top of the other one uh, if you're worried about it moving just stick a bit of um, tape around it or whatever and then leave it on until you've finished the job um, and then take them off um, and you'll find that there shouldn't be any oil on your pipes. Simple. Anyway, bonus item over. Wipe. The uh, oil's pretty much finished draining now. Now what I'm going to do while it's just finishing off that last bit, I've replaced my uh, tray with uh, just a little bowl just to catch those odd bits. And uh, what I'm going to do now is reclaim this uh, oil out of the bike. Uh, it's fairly new oil actually, it's only done about 400 miles on a temporary repair on the sump. So what I'm going to do anyway is I'm going to reclaim it and there's no real reason why you couldn't do it for your oil. Unless it's really, really old then I wouldn't recommend this. But for this oil where it's this fresh and this expensive, I'm going to use it to uh, flush uh, my final piece of cutting with the thread tool uh, just to make sure there's no swarf inside. I hope to catch it all with grease. Um, but let's see how it goes. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, what I'm going to do is, this is a, a normal funnel, but I've um, I modified it in my coolant change video. Um, you can go and have a look at that one to see how I made this. Basically it's garden hose stuff on the bottom. And what it means is, because it's only got a short, um, short down piece, whatever you want to call it, I don't know how technical thing for a funnel, um, you get this long lead. So when you put it in a container to put your oil in, which is a clean, dry, in this case, milk carton. When you put it in, it stays balanced up right. Simple, isn't it? So, more than to be said to the state of this can. Anyway, that's ready to go. Inside the funnel, you know this old polishing cloth stuff you can get? Well, it's not old, obviously it's new, but it's um, just simple. Uh, polishing thread, don't double that over, there's no need for that, all we're going to do is just filter the oil, there'll be nothing in it I doubt anyway, but I'm just going to stick that inside the funnel. Okay, now as I pour it in it will, it will stay, I hope. <laughs> um, make a good little well there. Stick that inside my container. Back here so you can see. All stable now. Cut that bit. Welcome to Mr. B's workshop. I've just brought you inside because I just want to show you a couple of things um, about what we're doing here. Um, so let's uh, let's put this down on the workbench. Uh, you can stop looking at my uh, ugly mug and uh, show you what we're up to in the workshop for this bit. Put this down here. Okay, hopefully you can see my work top. There it is. Right, uh, some people. So, what I've got to do 
that. So we can see what we're all about. Okay. Uh, right, any coil kit. Stop it. No, that's the wrong one. Right, now in the kit. Um, you get two different sizes of heli coil. Okay. Now, the short one's too short and the long one's too long. Here is my, let's just take this off. Here's my new sun plug. Okay. Now, I've got the gasket washer, whatever you want to call it, gasket washer. Someone probably come up with the real name. I'm not really bothered really. It's it's the gasket for this. And um, if I put on a longer well, I'll quickly show you, just to show that there's nothing missed here. I'll put the shorter one on. Okay, uh, and as you can see, it's not long enough. Okay, it's hit the little tang thing at the end. So I can't use that. And now if we put the longer one on. Hopefully this will make good viewing. Okay, I'm kind of touching the gasket washer now. I don't want to do it too tight because it'll be painting the gasket back off. But if you look inside, you'll see that the thread, and if I count them, one, two, three, three threads, when that's up tight, three threads too many. So, what I need to do is cut off three threads from the other end. So I'll take it back off. There we go. Okay, taking it off. Put the sun plug down there for the minute. Okay, how do we get three threads off of this? Right, I have a cutting plan. Uh, tools, tools, tools. Okay. Wire snips. Okay, you've probably got a better way. This is the way I'm going to do it, because these are the tools I've got. And some mole grips to get that extra bite power. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to count three threads. You can kind of open these up a little bit, just try and give you a close-up. See that? You can open it up a little bit. So I'm going to open it up three threads deep and cut three threads off. And I'm going to do it at the same point where the thread begins. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that along there. All right. So try and do this in shot. It's not easy. Um, I'm going to slide something in there, really. A bit of paper will do. Right. So I'm going to count down three threads. One, two, three. Three threads. I'm going to slip this piece of paper in for reference. Okay. I don't know if you can see that now. I'm going to cut off those top three threads. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm going to put the snips in. Juggling that with your fingers. Just gonna wiggle that in there. There. Got it. Okay. You can see that now. Got those three threads there. You get the idea. Okay. Next up, the mole grips. Don't know what you call them. I call them mole grips. Around the handle. So, get that in there good. There we do it. Uh, now, I don't want this twanging off anywhere and then hunting it down, so I'm just going to find a bit of rag. This will do. Okay, a bit of this, I'll just roll it over. Don't want it in my eye either, to be honest. So I'm just going to cover the spring up. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the thread so it doesn't go anywhere. No more, look, it will shoot out the back here, but anyway. Uh, and it's just to clamp down on the mole grips. Okay, here we go. Oh. Come on. Yep, that sounded good. 
let's see what we got. Hey. Right. Success. There. Okay, so that's the three threads I cut off. Yeah, I'm sure you can maybe count them if it's high def, depending on where the focus is. Which leaves me with this. Now I was wondering if I was going to need to tidy that up when I've cut it. But I'm quite happy with that. Quite happy with that. Right, let's see how that goes on the sump plug now. Screw it down. Yeah, it screws on fine. Beauty. Beautiful. When I've um, got that on just right, it'll sit just a little bit down. See that? Just a little bit down underneath the top of the thread of the uh, something that, which is where I wanted it to be. What I didn't want um, is a cup or a lip going into the sump from the thread. Yeah, from the helicoil. I didn't want that. So if it's a little bit below the sump plug, then for me, that's perfect and I'm really happy with that now so that's what we're going to use um, okay the other thing that I want to show you while I'm in here now I've got that I'll put that in here so that I don't lose it because that's the one um, I did do an oil change video um, but I don't know if you can see this yeah now when I undone the sump plug this was wrapped round the sump plug nut in the thread and that is aluminium from the sump and the reason why there's no video is because <laughs> I basically uh, I spat my dummy out big time I wasn't happy at all and uh, the person who I got this bike from has got a lot to answer for luckily I've got all video of evidence of all the work I've had to do on it since I acquired it anyway so whoever put the did the oil change over tightened the sump plug probably realized they had done and then stopped so basically that's why I'm now doing this helicoil job okay uh, I'm back sorry I just had my delivery of me oil and filter which I'm happy about um, which means we can continue without any breaks now then what I wanted to show you next was the cutting tool uh, this is the cutting tool and what's good about this cutting tool is that um, if you get the set that I mentioned before, you've got the pilot piece, okay? This piece um, uses the old thread to guide the cutting tool in, okay? Uh, it's not very good light in here, sorry about that. Um, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, you should be able to. Okay, come on, focus. Okay, so there's your cutting tool. The first part where that notch is, is the this piece here that's the pilot that will guide itself down the original thread which means that you don't go in at a nasty angle okay which is far better than the ones where you, the sets where you have to drill your own hole okay where you drill it out to the next stage of this cutting tool um, okay well the appropriate size for that cutting tool anyway it's written on the tool what size drill you want you probably won't be able to see, but there. Uh, yeah, all cutting tools have it, the size of the drill that you need. Anyway, don't need a drill for this one, alright? And it's better than the ones where you require a drill, because it means you go exactly the same path as the original thread. Now, with that in mind though, of course, in order to get to the length of your sump nut, yeah, and the distance in your sump panel, uh, did I say panel then? Uh, sump bowl, whatever you want to call it. I can't think of the name now. Oil pan, that's the one. The oil pan of the sump. This cutting tool, fucking right. This cutting tool is going to have to come to, let's go around this way, about there, which gives me about an inch and a half inside the sump. Now then, this is where you need to be careful depending on the engine you're doing. Okay, I've looked at the schematics and according to the Hayabusa diagram, there is nothing um, that's going to be uh, worth worrying about, nothing anywhere near this coming through into the sump, okay, into the oil pan area. It's absolutely clear. Now, 
um, I trust the diagram but not 100% so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just check that what I'm doing is right and I don't damage anything or start hitting up against anything inside the engine so how do I do that? right I've got a large allen key here okay it's uh, not large enough not too large that it won't go up inside the sump um, but um, it is large enough um, to give me a good reference and what I'm going to do if I take the length that I require now I'm saying I'm being over generous here, this is way past the gasket alright but I'm going to say call it there with my thumb that's how much distance I need I'm going to measure that against my allen key ok so now that you can see there with my other thumb all technical you could get a ruler and start trying to measure it but you'll see why it's not important later I've got that mark on my thumb now and then I've just got some chalk and I'm going to mark below that point with this chalk uh, again I'm going to be overly generous of where I mark on this allen key if I turn it round I don't know if you can see but I've actually marked it even lower down ok now I'm going to mark that all the way round ok in the same area let's see as I turn it round I'm guessing so what I'm going to do now once I've marked this up is I'm going to stick this up inside the sump and wiggle it around a little bit not you know massively but just search to see if there's anything in the engine that I need to be concerned about if I'm going to go inside the sump with the end of that cutting tool there there's my guide okay so I want to be able to get at least that deep inside the sump with not coming across any obstacles if I do I'm absolutely fine right uh, I think that covers everything here. Obviously I'm going to mark the tool as well with a black permanent pen in the same place so that I know I don't need to screw it any deeper. Okay? Uh, and I'll do that in a minute. I haven't got a marker with me. Alright, but we'll do that when we come to the cutting bit. Cutting of the thread, obviously. Right, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, catch you back outside. So you saw in the workshop I marked up this Allen key. Okay. You can see that marked. All right, and I'm going to stick it up in the sump in a minute and see if we've got clearance for me pilot there. So what I need to do line those two up, and then again, um, I'm just going to mark that with a pen, permanent marker. All right, I'll twizzle, twizzle it. <laughs> I'll turn this round so that you can see in a minute what I'm doing. It. Just for reference. So I'm only going to cut down to this black line. Okay. Bottom of the line. Just getting it where I'm happy. No further than that black line. Wow, this pen smells good. Don't smith pens, by the way, okay? It's not good for you. That cutting tool there. So I'm not going to go in any deeper than that when I cut it, and hopefully you'll see that because uh, I've set up another camera where I'm going to be doing the work, which is a close up at the bottom of the sump. Right? Ugh. Let's. Uh, Go and set up the other camera and then I'll be wiggling me Allen key up inside. Lovely. And I'm gonna give this a wiggle. There's me shump. So that is now up to the chalk mark. That's as far as I'm gonna go with a something, but it would appear there's nothing. There's nothing. Wow. 
that's there we go touching now right that's the full length of that that's the full length of that key oh. So that was the full length of that, okay. The whole length of that Allen key went up inside. Now I only need it up to the chalk mark. So we are definitely safe um, from any worries there. Now let's go up to the other camera. In fact, I'm that safe. I could put the entire tool inside <laughs> without reaching um, the bottom of, I'm guessing, the crank. Okay. So we're good, very good indeed. It's now time to get cutting. Uh, I'm going to go and get some grease, grease this up. The reason why I grease it is one to aid the cutting, and two to catch the catch the swarf that comes off. Okay, and we basically you, you get the pilot down, and it will follow the original thread, and you start getting to the cutting tool, which is on a bit of a chamfer there. Once that starts cutting in, it will pull the rest of the tool through at right angle because of the pilot thread. And what you do once it starts cutting is you wind it in once, one and a half, up to two times, depending on how it feels, and then you wind it back out. All the way out. Okay? All the way out. Wipe off all the swarf, grease it back up, back in. Same again. Yeah? Two turns all the way back out and repeat until you've got to your required depth now on other videos I've seen on YouTube they wind it back, wind it in, wind it back, wind it in, wind it back, wind it in, wind it back you're going to end up with so much swarf you'll push most of it up into the um, bottom of the sump you don't want to be doing that, the point of greasing this up is to catch all that and take it out and it's a slower process but okay <laughs> it's my bike I don't want any swarf inside. I'll also be flushing it through with the old oil as well. But anyway, two winds in, all the way back out. Put it back in again, it'll feel easy to get to where it starts cutting. Two winds further up, then all the way back out again. It seems like a pain, but it's worth it. Catch you in a minute. Okay, these are the tools I got. Got my cutting tool. I don't have a T-bar. Okay, if you've got one, fantastic. You want to buy one specially for the job, fantastic. I don't have one, I ain't got one to buy one. So I'm using a socket extender, yeah? And the end that you would normally attach to, I think it's a half inch ratchet. It might, I don't know, I'll put it in the text. Um, goes into the bottom of the tool. Then, um, I've got a 12 mil socket, which is the same fitting as what you would normally attach your sockets to. Uh, and then my wrench, uh, ratchet, sorry. That's my tool. Quite a big tool, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'll get some comments about that. But anyway, uh, now what we need to do, of course, is wind this in. Apparently, it's going the wrong way. Always make sure you go in the right way. So, a quick flick of the switch. And we're almost good to go. What I'm going to do now is grease up the cutting tool to catch all that swarf. All right, and I haven't got any cutting grease, but just as good copper grease because I've got lots of that. So I'm going to use copper grease. So there's my cutting tool. Okay, I'm just going to grease down it. We have to see it on that one as well. I'm not greasing where the pilot thread is. I'm grease greasing below it. Okay. That's what these little gouges for are in the cutting tool. To catch this wolf. Okay. I'll give you a close up on the other camera. This is kind of stuff, isn't it? Right, uh, there we go. Don't need to grease it all the way down, but that, that'll do for now. Just wipe any excess oil off the bottom. There'll be more anyway, but uh, just give it a little wipe. Tell you what, 
what's the chances of me getting that shot up the uh, check that out before the oil drips I'll be able to see the lack of thread when I look at that later that's what we'll come back to right oil drips yeah it's back in place right. a little bit of white okay Oh, backwards first, try and identify where the thread is, okay I think I've got it now, and, uh, just give that thread a bit of a grease, feels like it needs it, a bit of a grease. Yeah, I'm doing a little nudge backwards and then forwards, making sure that pilot follows the thread exactly. Go this reassurance that it's in the right thread. That's what I've been waiting for. view for everyone else. Use it as a time and treat. <clears throat> right, we've still not started cutting the thread yet. mil from cutting. Looking out too well with that ratchet. Motherfucker. Didn't need to wind in. Got that another 
notice I'm having to use an adjustable spanner, which I'm not happy about, but I'm keeping the thread straight, that's the main thing. Another half turn. Break off the spool and out she comes. There we go. You can see that there's a swarf on there, we get all that off. Get my finger and running it down, clearing off all that swarf laden grease. There we go. Okay. Alright, I've just cleaned the tool and now I'm going to grease it back up and repeat. Greasing it. Right, that's where we got to. Go back round so you can see again. Right, so we're going in two turns again. Oh, not quite there yet, now we are. Right, let's go so it's quarter turns. So I want eight turns. Seven. Eight. And break off the swarf. There. Like that. And we're now coming back out again. Rather than you keep filming this, I'll, I'll uh, cut back in when I'm on my last go. Okay. I'll take it out and clean it off like you did before. And there, look, you can see it's all the swarf again. We'll get that cleaned off. I'll just show you on the other camera. So there you go, look. It's all the shit coming off. Wipe it down with your finger. All that shite. Hard to see on this camera, but anyway. Yeah, wipe it down each side. With your finger. Get as much grease off as you can. Dab round. And then squirt the rest of chain cleaner. Right, and then it's back in again. Yeah, two whole turns or two threads in, back out, in, out, in, out, shake it all about until you get to your mark. Yeah, you can just about make out my mark on there on the camera. Yeah, 
Okay, that's what we're doing. I'll cut back in when I'm on my last turning in. Lovely. See you in a bit. Right guys, little update. Um, I've wound it in. Now, just before I go any further, uh, you may have noticed earlier in the footage, I marked my um, my cutting tool far too far down the thread. Uh, and I realised that um, when the cutting seemed to be getting easier, so I took it back out and remeasured and marked it properly. So, um, I'll correct that with some text and the thingy. Uh, but just let you know, it's all happening live here. Um, anyway, uh, I've got to my last turns now, and it's now suddenly become... Um, very loose, okay. Uh, well, not loose, but like a normal bolt screwing into a thread. Sorry about the screaming, kids. Uh, they're not mine. Um, anyway, um, so I've got to the point now where it's become easy, uh, which means to me that I've cut the through all the way up. So, what I want to do now is I'm going to take the cutting tool back out again, uh, and that'll be the last time it goes in. <laughs> That's a nice feeling, and um, from there. I'll try and get the, the little uh, action camera thing to uh, show you the thread that's been made by the cutting tool. Not easy, but I'll give it a go. In fact, what I'll do is I'll get a torch. That'll help, won't it? So I'm going to cut back into that, um, so I'll be over by the bike, and I'll, I'll see you in a sec. I'm just going to take this um, cutting tool out now. Oh. Oh, I need that. I can't believe I did this with oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. I'm just gonna what I was gonna say was um can't believe I did this with an adjustable wrench spanner, which I think is kind of almost hilarious. But I have This is what you call DIY on a budget. If I can do it with budget tools, you guys watching can do it with the right expensive tools. Okay, there we go. Let's get that cleaned off. All right. Can you see that thread that's been cut? I'm guessing you can. Right, I'm now going to flush that. Okay. Don't know if you can see up in there. Oh, nearly got my camera with that drip. Cutting done. I'm now going to use my. Um, I've not put the helicoil in. Don't put the helicoil in yet. I want to rinse out all that stuff, okay? Um, and the first part of that is just going to be to get rid of that grease. A bit of chain cleaner up inside. On the threads. A few squirts will do it. That cleans the threads off. Don't worry about the chain cleaner that's gone inside. It's going to come straight back out now because I'm going to flush it. Off of the oil filler. On there. Why not? <laughs> Bungee. I'll take that off. Bungee, bungee, bungee. It's going to get bungee for that still. Okay, this is the oil I took out. It's pretty clean. It's now my flushing oil. Actually, it's more than pretty clean because I filled it and everything. All right, this is my now my filling oil. This is now my flushing oil. All right, some good glugs just to wash, wash it down. Yeah, don't just continually pour it in. Glug it in a bit, leave it, and then another big glug. We'll see what happens down the bottom.
Lovely. Fucking mosquitoes now. That's enough flushing for now. That drain a little bit, and then uh, we'll put the heli coil in. Did that fun? So then we'll put the heli coil in. Brilliant. Time to put the uh, heli coil in. Awesome. Go around and uh, use me action cam to try and capture some of that. Remove the heli coil. Still dripping a bit, but hey ho. So I can do it. Screw it in like a normal screw. These are designed to go in but not come out. So once you start screwing your helicoil in, you're committed. So make sure you've got the right one. Okay. We're going in and we just want all the threads to disappear inside our Newly cut thread. Last one's just going in. Have a look. Not too bad, just a little bit more. There's a little tang. Look at that now. Almost there. There's a little tang up inside that that little blade fits into. I've, you've seen it many times in the other shots, but I'm just explaining. A little more turn. Oh, that's it. Nice and flush all the way around, nothing catching. That's the heli coiling, boys and girls. Okay, what's left? is another quick glug of flushes just to get any other little bits of shit or swarf or grease out and then we fill her up change the oil filter, fill her up and jobs are good and to show you right what we've got now is we've got this up inside this uh, they call it a tang piece of metal yeah that sticks out that's what we use to locate and screw it in now we've got to snap it off now you'll see don't even get close enough, but there's a little notch. Come on, focus. There's a little notch there, see it? Uh, if I put my finger where the notch is. A little notch. That's a cut into the thread by the manufacturers of these. There you go, you can see it now. Alright, and that's where it'll snap off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pliers up inside the sump, locate the tang from underneath. I'm going to get a bit of clamp on that with the uh, mole grips, okay? And I'm just going to tap it and knock it out. Remember, we've got a lot of clearance here, so don't worry too much, but you don't want to be whacking the hell out of it. But there's quite a bit of a clearance. And actually, snap off the tang, keep it inside these long nose pliers, um, and then we'll take it back down and out. Then we'll flush one more time before we fill up. Yeah. I've located a hammer, and we'll just use this to knock the tang out. <laughs> Don't use it for a jammer. Not a ten pound one anyway. Oh no joking. Bit of humour. Time to locate the tank. Same principle as before with the mole grips. Don't need as big a grip though. We only want to hold it. Four should do it. There. Okay. We'll find the tank and then clamp on. So up we go with the long nose pliers. I can't get underneath to look. So see, see, got it first time. That definitely feels like it. Okay. Time to clamp on. Yeah. 
That's an indication you've got your tank. Right. There we go. Couple of knocks up, quick sharp pull down. That, my friends, is the tang. Just to show you that over here. So you saw that there was a couple of knocks up, quick knock down, and that bent it up and then pulled it out because it's designed to be knocked out upwards. So knock, knock with a hand. Yeah. Knock, knock, yank. Yeah. Bang, like that. And now it comes. And there it is, all in one piece. That's a sigh of relief. Right, let's do a quick flush and uh, do her up. Get the oil filter off. Uh, sorry, get the oil filter off. <laughs> How hard can it be? Right. There is the tang. Okay. So it was two knocks up, which is the way it's designed to break off. Okay, two knocks up and then a, a bang down. Okay, and that will pull it out. And that's what I used, more grips and a long nose pliers. That's the tang all in one piece. So, uh, what we need to do now is to uh, basically take the old oil filter off, which isn't that old to be fair, but it's coming off. I've got a new one. Take that off, get the rest of the oil off of that. Um, that will come out of that. Now I've got my cans in place to uh, protect me uh, exhaust from a lot of excess oil um, and then once that oil is drained out we'll put the prep the new oil filter put it in fill her up jobs are good in I can see in there somewhere ring and on I'll put this one on so it's been not over tightened Probably do the rest by hand. Still in the back of the filter now so it don't just fall out and drop oil everywhere. Come here. Don't you drop all the other trouble. Come on. There. Sticking that upside down in the oil. A few more glugs of uh, flushing oil, um, and then we'll start finishing off like we were doing a normal oil change. coming out. That all looks good. No shine bits. And a glove. You know what? That's <laughs> what's the minute? I've just saved like $300, uh, 220 quid. At least, at least. And if there is a, a qualified mechanic that knows how much this job would cost to do, then let us know. Uh, especially if you're going to be, not what I've just done, of course, I'm on about taking the engine out um, and all the hassle that that is, getting it on a bench. Turning it upside down, taking the sump off, heavy coiling it on a bench, and then putting it all back together, da da da, and you're back in the bike. I think I might be underestimating. If someone could tell me down there, that'd be awesome. I'd like to know how much I've saved. Because my heli coil kit I managed to get for 50 UK pounds, which is probably about 75 US dollars. Um, and that's it. That's it. Uh, I've done this for. Um, 50 pounds. Obviously I needed oil and filter anyway, but uh, 50 quid. I think that's a big saving. So I hope this video saves you that much money.
if you want to send me some of it, that'd be awesome. <laughs> anyway, I hope you found this useful. Um, I'll finish off and uh, obviously do everything up, put a new filter on. Let's do that now. So the first stage, to get my new filter out, I need to cover it for a minute. Take a couple of the new oil. Get some of this shit away. I'm not the tidiest of uh, maintenance people. I'm always clear up at the end. Um, open the lid. That's something. filter. Right, cover off the filter. I think it comes with one of them. No, it depends on the model you buy, but um, I like K&N's because you always get a, well, pretty much always get another one, depending on the make or model of bike. Right, take the rubber seal out. Like that, because behind the rubber seal it's bone dry. And what I want is a nice squeaky fit. Okay. Alright, so all you do then is you dip a finger or two fingers in the new oil. Finger and thumb, like so. Run it round. That reminds me actually. I'm gonna get that lost plenty of oil on that. That reminds me, I saw a uh, horse heard something about someone saying that you half fill your oil filter with oil. Um before you put it on. I'm like, well, yeah, if your oil filter points down, that makes sense. Uh, obviously on the higher busser and most bikes I know, I'm trying to think now, but off the top of my head, I'm sure you can put some that are, uh, the bikes that do have the oil filter facing down, uh, maybe some older models, I'm not sure. Anyway, all, all Suzuki's as far as I'm aware, um, the oil filter is uh, horizontal. So if you are fill it with oil, then half of that oil is going to come out when you go to fit it, isn't it? Right, that's got a nice um, layer of oil on it now. Pop the seal back into place, make sure you get it around the right way. There's a lip. Um, what's the best way of describing this lip? No, it's probably not easy just to flip and show you. I'm trying to get it on the camera so you can see. There's a... The diameter of the rubber ring is smaller and that's the smaller, uh, the diameter of the rubber ring is smaller at the back of the, or as I would say, the bit that goes against the filter, yeah, because there's a little lip that you need to run it into, a bit like um, putting a tyre around a wheel, yeah, you just do that and you just feel it clipping as you, as you slide it round. And obviously looping it with oil helps you do that. Let's just do that now, <sighs> try and do it on a bloody camera. Bit of firm pressure as you run it round. It'll go in eventually. There we go. I don't know if you can see what I'm bloody doing here. Right, that's clipped in now. And now, you can get this right so you can see. The rubber ring is now nicely seated and it turns. I hope you can see that. See that turning. Right. Let's put it on. It's just wiped around the edge. Where it seals it. It's still clean from when I did it last time. Lovely. They never bite me, but they just piss me off. Like wasps. So you just run it in. Just till it touches. And 
uh, you want about a quarter of a turn uh, and that's sealed. I'm just using one little finger. That's enough. Right. Sump plug. Now, if we've used the right heavy coil, this is going to be a great success. If I've used the wrong one, I'm in trouble. Look how awesomeness of that thread. That is poetry. That is poetry. Right, 17 mil. Let's tighten her up. Gorgeous. Oh, that feels good. Oh, yeah. Right, anyway, so I'm just waiting for me um, gasket ring, whatever you want to call it, to meet the bottom of the sump. Like that. That has now met the sump. And a quarter turn is all you need. Bear that in mind, the person that did this bike before can toss her. Job done. Just wipe off the access. Go for a ride. Take these cans off. Don't cut yourselves. Lovely, look at that nice new nut. Is it clean, isn't it? There. That's how your heli coil a Suzuki Hayabusa. Heli coil complete, nut tightened up. There's only one thing left to do. Do you know what? I'm really happy right now. <laughs> I've saved a fortune. Uh, now what I'm going to do is fill it up with oil, which is probably the easiest part of this. Get your oil, get your filler, pour it in. There you go my baby. That's going to feel so much better in the morning. Okay, there's one more other thing I'll show you. I mean, this is an oil change now, so it's kind of standard. Um, watch here. Watch it go to the full, and then I'll show you something that you need to consider. I'm just pouring your oil in. So the oil filter is uh, still empty, so we need to start up the bike and fill the oil filter up. Uh, take your filler out before you start. That down there, in there for a second. Right, uh, on with the cap. Fill the caps on and uh, we'll start up. Nelly Fall is now on the low mark. We'll top it off. 
And that's it. Oil fill the cap back on. So that was how to repair a sump thread on a Hayabusa 1999. Um, so we've done um, a heli coil, um, obviously a drain, a heli coil, um, and then filled it back up. I hope you found this useful and if you ever are in a situation where you need to do this on your bike then hopefully you can use this guide to help you with your bike. Uh, just make sure you get the right thread size, the right kit. Um, if you got, if you got any questions, of course, um, put some text down there, and I'll come back to you. Doesn't necessarily have to be a higher buser, okay? Um, if you're a bit concerned, you're not sure which kit to get, uh, just send us a message uh, down below. Uh, don't PM me, please put it down below because then everyone else will get to see it, okay? And that'd be great. And uh, I'll I'll look into it for you and make sure you get the right kit for your bike. Um, uh, and that's it, really. How to repair a Hayabusa sump thread and uh, fill it back up with nice new oil. Hope you found this useful. I hope it saves you some money. Uh, thank you for watching, Mr. Brains. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. Okay, I hope this saves you some money. It saved me a, a heck of a lot of money. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching, Mr. B's Brain Dump DIY. Uh, please subscribe and any comments down below, any questions down below. Many thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day. Bye.